This is Hina, the voice behind Dr. Teeth. Why smash your head in your textbook when we are here to make dentistry easy for you? So before we proceed to the video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. And also, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and comment as it motivates us to create more videos of this kind. For more amazing content, don't forget to visit our website where we have MCQs, courses and much more. So let's begin. Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. In the last video, we had studied about some of the characteristics or requirements of the major connectors, right? In this video, we are going to cover the maxillary major connector, the advantages, disadvantages, and in what type of cases each one of them is used. Now, before we proceed into that, let me just quickly rewind the requirements of the major connector once again because this will determine the design and hence the various types of connectors. Okay. So, the first and the very important one was the rigidity, right? We had learned that the major connector should be rigid. Why? Because a rigid major connector will distribute the forces equally. So, all the forces will be distributed to the abutment teeth equally. Hence, there would be least chances of damage of any area. Okay. Then, we had also seen that this major connector, it makes the other attachments. It makes the other components effective. Means the retentive clasp here, the rest here, all these, you know, components they will be effective only if we have a rigid connector. The second requirement was that it should not impinge the free gingival margin because we have blood supply. It is a very vascular area. So what we need to do, we need to keep the edges to some distance. For the maxillary one, it is 6 mm and for the mandibular one, it is 3 mm. Okay. I am not mentioning the mandibular because this is a maxillary major connector video, okay? Also, we had seen that the borders of the major connector should be parallel to the gingival margin, okay? So, these two should be parallel, okay? Then, if the gingival margin needs to be crossed, then it should be at 90 degree, okay? So, parallel and 90 degree. Also, the major connector should be such that it can give some added indirect retention. Not that you can take a role of indirect retainer from the major connector. You should not even think of that. The thing is, it can provide additional role in resisting the rotation of the prosthesis. We have certain elements like the rest and the rest seat that provide indirect retention. But our major connector should be capable enough of providing some additional role in that. We had also learnt about the beading, okay? So the borders, for example, in this case, we have a anterior posterior palatal bar. So here we have multiple borders, right? So here and here, we can do something called beading. So beading is basically creating a valley in the cast. So that when you invest it, it has certain prominent portion in the denture, okay? Also note here that we have the rugae here, right? We have the elevations and depression rugae. So where to end this thing? Where to have the borders? For example, if you see this from the side, okay? So we have rugae, something like this. And then we have the rest of the palate, okay? So let us suppose this is our major connector. Now where to end this major connector? For example, if we have to end it somewhere here, right? So you just end it just before the most prominent rugae, okay? You cannot end it here. This will be uncomfortable to the patient. We have to end it just before that specific rugae means on the posterior slope, not on the anterior slope because it will be very uncomfortable to the patient and the tongue will obviously go there again and again, okay? The design of the major connector is also dependent on some, you know, tori or the prominence in the palate. So if we have a tori, we cannot give complete palate. So that also determines the design. All these borders, they should be rounded. 
okay so these should be rounded if we have these corners sharp this will not only cause patient discomfort but it will also cause areas of stress concentration within the framework so our prosthesis can fracture why to take that risk so keep the corners rounded also let me just clear all these things this is the midline okay now the borders of the major connector should cross this midline at 90 degree why because the tissues here are thin and they can be easily irritated so we have to keep the length of the crossing minimal okay if you cross it like this more tissues will be covered but if we are just crossing it 90 degrees the length of crossing can be minimized therefore the chances of irritation is less okay so we learnt about the rounded borders crossing it crossing midline at 90 degree so these were the design requirements let's now move on to the types of the major connector the first one is the palatal bar so as the name says it is a thin bar kind of thing going all the way at the posterior border why am i saying posterior why not anterior because let us just understand it this way okay this palatal bar we know from the requirements that it has to be rigid this is a very important requirement and has to be fulfilled by each of the major connector so it has to be rigid now how to make it rigid here it is very thin obviously it is a bar so it has to be thin only right so how to make it rigid by increasing the bulk so it is actually made thick okay and if you look it from side like from this side if you cut it and look it from this side it will look something like this okay so it is half oval in shape and the center is the thickest area so we got to know that the palatal bar is bulky we have no other option but to keep it bulky we have to keep it this way now if we try to keep this palatal bar anteriorly obviously it will be very uncomfortable to the patient so that is one of the reason why we cannot give palatal bar in the anterior areas and to be precise the palatal bar should not be placed anterior to the second molar so this is the limit this is the limit of our palatal bar now as we can see here this is very thin this is just attaching the palate like this we are not getting any kind of vertical support means we are not getting any kind of the support from the slopes here right so this kind of design has no other option but to get the support from the remaining teeth right and that is a disadvantage because we are using the teeth to bear forces why to make them experience the force so based on the design this palatal bar it is used in the short span class 3 it is used in class 3 what is class 3 we have missing teeth okay and we have teeth anterior to it and the teeth posterior to it so that this palatal bar can get support from these teeth okay so its use is limited to class 3 short span class 3 the next one is the palatal strap so as the name says instead of a bar we have a strap so we will have some broad design here not a bar and how broad this should be minimum of 8 mm 8 mm okay and this palatal strap it is not bulky because because we are covering more palatal area right so we are getting the support from there also the increased surface area will provide the rigidity so this doesn't need to be bulky we can keep it thin now as the number of missing teeth increases we can increase the size of this palatal strap it's not that it should just be 8 mm the minimum is 8 mm it can be more than that depending on the number of teeth missing and obviously if it increases and increases it can become a complete palatal connector which is another type of connector that we will be studying in a while now this palatal strap it is used for 
Kennedy class 2. We are using it for class 2. That is the unilateral edentulous area. We cannot use it for the bilateral edentulous area because we cannot get that ultimate rigidity with this type of strap. For that, we would need a complete palatal coverage. Also note here that since it is broader, we are getting that, you know, slope effect. We are getting the advantage of the slope. We are getting the advantage of the vertical support. So the forces that come to this kind of design will be distributed both in the horizontal vertical plane. So when we have that distribution in different planes, this is similar to the L beam principle, which is used in the construction, in building construction. So when we have forces experienced in different planes, they will be counteracted more easily. So we got to know the advantages. Advantages were that since we have more coverage, we have more rigidity, we have more potential to, you know, counteract the forces because of L beam effect, all those things, okay? Now the disadvantage here is, first one is patient discomfort. The patient can complain of excessive palatal coverage depending on your case. So just try to keep the beading line here for the rugae area posterior to the, remember posterior to the most prominent one. If the border has to end somewhere here according to your design, keep it at the posterior end so that it is less detectable for the patient. Also posteriorly, it should be positioned anterior to the junction of the soft and hard palate. Some conditions like papillary hyperplasia can also be, can also happen. So just give advice to the patients about the oral health, how to, you know, maintain the appliances, the duration of wearing, etc. Okay. The third type is the anterior posterior palatal bar. Means we have one bar anteriorly, we have one bar posteriorly. Just a while back, I told you that we don't place palatal bar anteriorly. Now, why am I saying anterior posterior palatal bar? Is that there are certain design changes in it. The anterior one, it is like a strap, not a bar, okay? So, this will be thin, this will be broader. And this posterior one will be like that of a bar. So, it will have a half oval cross section and this will be quite thin, okay? So, anterior posterior palatal bar is equal to palatal bar posteriorly plus plus palatal strap anteriorly. Anteriorly. A for anterior, B for posterior. Now, the advantage here is that these two together will provide rigidity. Also, we are leaving this area open, right? So, the soft tissue coverage is minimum. That is another advantage because it will be less uncomfortable for the patient. And we are using this when we have teeth missing at a distance. Like, you know, when the abutment teeth are widely separated. Okay. We have teeth missing here and here and we have these abutment teeth. So, how do you do that? If you don't want to involve the entire palate, we can go for this palatal bar, anterior posterior palatal bar. Nevertheless, it has disadvantage and that is patient may complain that it is uncomfortable. Also, we have less contact here in the palate, okay? So, though we are getting more support compared to the palatal bar or palatal strap alone, but we are getting less support compared to the complete palate, isn't it? So, it will take the support from the teeth. Now, if the patient is periodontally compromised, that will harm him. So, that is also a disadvantage in periodontally compromised patient. So, this cannot be the first choice of major connector. Use it only when there are certain things like there is tori or the patient does not want his palate to be completely blocked. We also have anterior posterior palatal strap. So, we have strap on both the sides. I don't know why I removed this plus. We have strap here that is posteriorly and strap anteriorly. Now, so this kind of design can be used in majority of cases because we don't have the bulkiness here but we have the 
rigidity we need and we also have less soft tissue coverage so remember the design requirements not less than 8 mm okay so you can see a better design somewhere here i'll try to upload it now you can see we have a open area here this open area it should be at least 20 into 15 mm if it is less than this choose some other type of the major connector like you can use the wide palatal strap or you can use complete pallet or modified complete pallet so what are the advantages we are getting all the advantages we need like like we are getting the rigidity we are getting the l beam effect we are getting better retention because the rugae here is covered so that depressions and elevations this contour will give more retention now disadvantage here since the rugae is covered phonetics can be a complaint of the patient speech problem then we have the fourth type of major connector that is the horseshoe connector so as the name says it will be u shaped or horseshoe shaped so why to give such a shape obviously when you have teeth missing here you will want to cover it right you will want to extend this design anteriorly so this will obviously become a u shape instead of that you know left to right thing so this is used in kennedy class 4 means anterior missing teeth also this design is excellent when we have tori or you know prominent mid palatine suture now note here that this border means it should be placed at the junction of the horizontal and vertical slope means this is the vertical slope right and when it comes here it is a flat thing so this border it should be at the junction of the vertical and the horizontal surface okay and it should be symmetrical also the disadvantage here is that it has a tendency to flex how let us keep all the connectors here together try to bend this one can you i don't think so try to bend this one no this one no this u shape obviously you can bend this so the forces they can deform this horseshoe connector okay so when vertical force is applied to one or both end there is a tendency that this connector will deform so it is a very poor choice for distal extension partial dentures so don't use let me just write it here disadvantage don't use when we have distal extension distal extension no also don't use when you need cross arch stabilization one thing that can be done to avoid this flexing is to make this area thick make this area rugae area thick now the problem here is that if we increase the bulk of metal here this will be very uncomfortable to the patient and also will affect his speech so doing that is not a good idea now let us talk about the complete palette means the entire palette is now covered so this kind of design when we have the entire palette covered this provides the greatest rigidity and support because obviously we are taking the vertical support horizontal support we also have the maximum coverage that provides maximum retention we have least force on the teeth so this is very good one in terms of all these things the problem is that you know patient discomfort because we are covering the palate now here the anterior border it should be 6 mm away from the marginal gingiva or if you need to cover that 
you have to cover the singular of the anterior teeth either you know give 6 mm distance between the marginal gingiva and the border or if you need to you can cover the singular of the anterior teeth okay now one more thing this posterior border does not require peripheral seal similar to the complete denture because we are not border molding here instead we have to bead it right beading remember so beading will provide the seal we need and also prevent the food entering the inside of it so we use the complete palate when we have kennedy class 1 when the edential span is long we have modifications anterior modification okay also when we have a shallow palatal vault flabby ridge we need to go with complete palate the patient who have cleft palate shall also be given complete palate because we need to cover this right we have to avoid external things going inside the cleft so we can cover it by complete palate the disadvantage here is that it will cause patient discomfort problem with phonetics also some tissue reactions can happen so let us just summarize this when we have a long span distal extension we will preferably give complete palate we can also give anterior posterior palatal strap for that matter when you need to replace the anterior teeth we can give anterior posterior palatal strap we can give complete palate we can also give horseshoe major connector if we have some prominences like torus very prominent mid palatine suture then we can go for horseshoe shaped or anterior posterior palatal strap or palatal bar also keep in mind that when the periodontal support is not very strong in that case we have to take maximum support from the major connector itself don't rely on the teeth rely on the major connector so in that case give the one having more surface area like the palatal strap like the complete one if the periodontal support is good we can go for palatal bar also but that is not used nowadays also we had learned that the horseshoe connector is not a very good one because it has tendency to deform and when we try to increase the bulk in the rugae area to prevent the deformity this will be very unacceptable to the patient also phonetics will be a problem so that is not the horseshoe is not a good one so this was all about the maxillary major connector i hope you found the video helpful in the next video we are going to cover the mandibular major connector till we meet next time take very good care of yourself and let your friends colleagues know about dr teeth thanks for watching allah hafiz